Hi, my name is Amrita and this is my booktube and today I'm going to be doing the accepted test which is a wheel of time tag. The two great loves of my life coming together. Now seriously, I know that maybe like five of you really care about the wheel of time or have even read it. Um, but I think that's going to change in maybe like another year when the series comes out. I mean, I hope so. Fingers crossed. But even if it doesn't, um, a year is a little too long for me not to do anything Wheel of Time related because have I mentioned how obsessed I am with that series? Like I have been for my whole life or starting like when I was 12. I've seen a bunch of people do this, but um, I think the first one that I actually sat through was the one done by Galactic Reads. So I'm going to link down to her video below and I'll see if I can find the original tag as well. And obviously there are going to be a few spoilers, but I will give a shout out when that happens because not every question is spoilery. Okay, the first question is how did you first hear about the Wheel of Time and what made you want to read the series? So one of my dad's best friends whom I called Grandpa Velu because he and his wife were basically my stand-in grandparents for a large chunk of my childhood. They had a bunch of grandchildren and they were really nice about including my brother and myself in anything that they had planned with those kids. And we all kind of grew up together and were very close when we were little. So if you arrange us by age, there was my brother who was the eldest, then there was Renju, and then there was Kanna, and then myself, Manu, and then Ronnie. And Renju and I, Renju was maybe like three or four years older than I was and I really looked up to her and she was um, sort of like, you know, my girl crush as well as my role model and my friend and uh, a sort of sisterly stand-in. And she was awesome. She was just really cool and she had read a lot and they were an army family and she was just really sporty and independent and she eventually joined the Indian Army as a matter of fact. And I think she's now a pilot. So, you know, she's just really cool. Female role models, I love them. But around the time that I was maybe around 11 or 12, Kanna started reading The Wheel of Time and he got Ranju into it. And uh, one day when we were just hanging out at their grandparents, Ranju and Kanna said, oh, you know, I bet you'd love this series. Um, it's really fun. And this was so long ago that at the time, The Wheel of Time was supposed to be a trilogy. And that's how they gave it to me. And I remember writing a book report for the school magazine. And I was telling people about like this amazing new series that I've discovered and how it's a trilogy. I don't think I have that school magazine. Like I lost it in one of the many moves. But yeah, Renju and Kana really knew what I would like. And they recommended that I read it. And it's been a love affair ever since. Okay, second question. If you had the chance to join an Aja in the White Tower, which one would you join? Based on which one you pick, answer the corresponding question. I would like to imagine that I would be a green Aja, but to be honest, I'd probably be like a brown or a blue. Is that a basic bitch answer? I feel like that's a basic bitch answer. Anyway, um, let me answer the questions for the blue and the green because those are the Ajas of my heart. The blue Aja, a plot twist you didn't see coming. Okay, spoilers, but in the last book, I didn't see Demand Red showing up with the Sharans. I also didn't expect Demand Red to be straight up insane. You know that scene where he's just yelling for Luz Theron and Matt is just like, what is his problem? Why is he yelling all the time? I really felt that. I've had that reaction to so many uncles in my life and just to see Matt react that way to this guy who's like literally murdering millions at a go. I mean, that was very validating. Green Archer. Favorite battle scene in Wheel of Time? Again, spoilers, but I really enjoyed the scene where the Trollocs are attacking the White Cloaks. 
and dumbass Gallard is just completely unprepared because you know like he really thought that just because they were white cloaks and they were fighting for the light the dark ones forces wouldn't affect them you're an idiot Gallard but I really enjoy the fact that you know all the white cloaks were like yeah channelers suck and then they're just like Oh my god, where are the channelers? Mommy, this is scary. And then they look up and, you know, the heavens light up and then there's Perrin holding the hammer and he's just charging down that hillside. I can see that scene in my head and it is awesome. And it is even better just because Perrin has had like the worst arc in the books up till that point, like for the past like two or three books. And you just felt like Perrin as a character wasn't going anywhere and you were just so impatient and you had had enough of him. And then he just absolutely redeems himself in that one scene and it is awesome. Who's a character you love but would hate to meet in real life? Okay, bear with me, but Lan. I think he's awesome and I love him as a character. I love the journey that he takes throughout the books. But you have to admit, like, he wouldn't be the best conversationalist. You kind of get the feeling that if Lan was just hanging around, he'd just be a brooding presence, just sort of minding his own business, which is fine, but you know, you don't really want to hang out with a person like that. And if he did relax and if he did want to just, you know, hang out with you then he'd totally be the kind of pretentious person who'd like quote obscure bits of poetry i mean the times when lan does it it's amazing and it is so emotional in the books but you don't particularly want that in like a dinner companion also rand because you know he's crazy Who's a character from another book that would make a good warder? I feel like this is a really easy question to answer considering that Lan is basically Aragorn, right? The Wheel of Time as a series is basically an update on Lord of the Rings and Lan is very clearly rooted in the same sort of clay that gave birth to Aragorn. So yeah, Aragorn would absolutely fit in seamlessly, but I didn't want to take the easy way out. So I think the character from another book or series that would fit in really well is Watson from Sherlock Holmes. When you think about it, like all the Aes Sedai are basically just like Sherlock. They're convinced they're invincible and the smartest people in the room. Like even the dowdiest and drabbest of Browns is just convinced that they're the smartest people in the room. And Watson's great, you know, he takes notes. Depending upon the version that you read, he's also the muscle. He's always there where you need him. Excellent backup support. And he'd be great for, you know, a bunch of different Arjas. It's not just the Browns that he'd be great for. He'd be handy for the Blues. If you take him from certain versions of Sherlock, then he'd be handy for the Greens. He'd be the perfect foil for the Whites. You know, they could condescend to him all the time and he wouldn't even notice because that's what Sherlock does. And I'm sure he can, like, carry stuff for the Yellows. So, you know, Dr. Watson, that's what's good. What's a scene from the books you're most excited to see on screen? I mean, there's a bunch. I've been waiting for this series for like 25 years. So, you know, there's like a whole slew of scenes that I'm excited to see. But um, I wanted to choose something from the first book because that's what's being adapted right now. And I think the boy's first time in Camelin. I mean, there's such country bumpkins at that point. Um, I really want to see them in a big city for the first time and like a beautiful city. And then Rand at the court is just fabulous. He's got that training from Milan, but you know, he's half trained and everybody at the court is sort of like, oh, who's this farmer? And then boom, he's got a heron sword and he gets to see Elida for the first time. Like I am so excited for that scene. What are your favorite and least favorite book covers? Okay, for sheer 
nostalgic value and 90s realness it has to be that first eye of the world cover by daryl k sweet i've heard and seen people mock it and talk about like oh what is this you know the proportions are off blah 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 i don't care these were the covers that we grew up with when we were reading them back in the 90s and they were great look at that cover doesn't it invite you into a whole other world that's what a cover is supposed to do a bunch of pretty vines and flowers is sure it's very pretty but it doesn't invite you into the story the way this cover does it's great i judge you super hard if you don't like this cover but in terms of sheer beauty, I think the um, the ebook cover for The Shadow Rising that has matte on the cover, and I think it was designed by Tom Weber, and I'm going to link down below to um, this interview that he did that talked about his choices and how he ended up making these choices to make that cover, but it is gorgeous. I mean, I'm already inclined towards anything with matte on it, but this is a legitimately beautiful cover. And again, like that first Dell Sweet cover, it promises you things within those pages. It makes you want to open it up. And I think that's what a good cover is supposed to do. Catch your attention and lure you in. My least favorite cover, on the other hand, I don't even know who did this and if I did, I wouldn't mention them because it's just so blah. But Tor is basically reissuing the series in time for the series to like coincide with them. And you know, it's just the great snake that's sort of eating its own tail and I guess it's fine. Like I think they were going for a Game of Thrones vibe with it, but it just sucks. I mean, if you saw this at the bookstore, what does it even mean to you? Nothing. As an older person, like my memories as a reader and my experience as a young reader is sort of intrinsically interwoven into that experience of being in a bookstore and a bunch of different colors would catch my eye and I would be like, oh, what is this? And then I would look at the pictures and you know, it would just really draw me in. And I still feel that way when I'm in a physical bookstore, which I haven't for the past eight months. And it is not good, you guys. I miss bookstores. And a great fun cover is just such a good way to draw in new readers and to just catch the attention of somebody who might not even know that they were looking for your book. And instead, we have this. What's a location in the Wheel of Time you'd like to visit? So Teleran Riyod is the only correct answer to this, obviously. Who doesn't want to go to a shadow world where your thoughts become real? It's dangerous yet exciting. But that said, I think I would like to go on the seas with the Athanmir. It sounds awesome, you know, just skimming over the waves in those fleet ships full of like badass bossy women who know their shit it sounds amazing also i just like the sea so that's where i'd like to go if you could make your own terangriel what would it look like and what would it do okay i'm very sure about what i want it to look like i want an ornamental headpiece of the kind that nynaeve or Katsuan wear. I am 100% not the kind of person that you would bump into at the supermarket on a Tuesday afternoon with some kind of headpiece. No tiaras, no scarves, no hats, nothing. But I have always wanted to be one of those women. And if we are living in a world where, you know, we can design and own our own Therangriel, then I want to also be the kind of woman who would put pretty things in her hair. So a little golden bird of some kind. And as for what it would do, I think maybe I would like it to teleport me places. And I'd also like it to be one of those um, Age of Legends Terangriels that don't require channeling, just on the off chance that I'm not a channeler. Although if I'm not a channeler, why do I have a Terangriel? So I'm probably a channeler. But I'd like to hedge my bets. 
So that's my final answer. I would like a ornamental golden headpiece thing. Like nothing too big, just like, you know, a tiny little bird of some kind that was super cute and worked in gold. And I could just wear it like over here, maybe. And then if I was running late for something, I could just be like tap and boom, I'd be someplace else. What's another book or series you think Wheel of Time fans might like? Okay, I think what would work is something from the 90s because most of modern fantasy has a very different feel from the Wheel of Time, so I don't want to go with something post 2000s. So I think perhaps what I would recommend is um, Daughter of the Empire, which is a trilogy that feeds into the magician cycle by Raymond E. Feist. The Magician Cycle is the series of interconnected books that are exploring different facets of this interplanetary war. And Servant of the Empire is, or Daughter of the Empire, and then Servant of the Empire, and then Mistress of the Empire. So it's three different books, it's a trilogy. And that is about this one particular woman that lives on one of the planets that's at war. And in the earlier books, that particular planet is the aggressor and they're the villains of the piece. But in this particular trilogy, you see what's happening on this planet and how this one woman is working to change things. And it's sort of for Japan and it's very enjoyable. It sort of has Shonchan vibes, but it might not bother you as much as the Shonchan in the Wheel of Time series. Tag some Wheel of Time content creators and or fans to do the tag. I feel like most of the ones that I know have already done this or you know this is a pretty difficult tag in a way so I don't know if I want to tag anyone but if you love the Wheel of Time and you'd like to do this tag please take it away and let me know because I love this tag. It's so interesting just to see other people talk about these things and um, I would love to see it. And for those of you who couldn't care less about the Wheel of Time, thank you so much for sticking with this video so long. And um, if you haven't read the Wheel of Time, there is no time like the present to start. For more videos, please hit the subscribe button.